All right, joining me now is a guest who's going to be a bit more of a familiar face going forward. The outgoing executive director of the Institute of Public Affairs, John Roscombe, who will stay with the IPA, but hopefully we're going to get him more on the program in his new role. Let's talk about energy, John. The greatest crisis in 50 years, we're told today. More renewables were supposed to be the answer, but we're not talking about nuclear. We've promised a net zero by 2050, no idea how we're going to get there. And we now have a new government with more green types on the crossbench than ever before. Where's this headed? It's headed into a very bad place, Peter. Australians need to know this is the direct result of a policy of net zero. Uh, we are going to see more of this. When you have the federal energy regulator basically telling people to turn off their heaters to start rationing gas, when we have decades of gas in this country, if not centuries, we have a very significant problem. We have bans on exploration and drilling from the coalition government in New South Wales. We have bans on onshore fracking in Victoria. Uh, Australians have got very little understanding of what potentially could be the cost of net zero, and we're starting to see it. All right, we can have this whole debate that Labor's foisting on us about a race-based constitutionally entrenched body, that's allowed to be a referendum topic. Why can't we have a referendum on nuclear? Well, exactly, Peter. And Greg Sheridan, in your discussion with him, was outstanding, outlining why race should not be a principle embedded in the Constitution. And I very much dislike this idea that those who believe in racial equality have to be arguing no. I mean, I think uh, we have to be arguing yes for racial equality and political equality. Uh, and similarly, in relation to, to nuclear power, it's a question uh, that Australians deserve to have a discussion about. It's been talked about in the coalition ranks for decades. There was concern that mm. as soon as it was raised, uh, votes would be lost. But the IPA is about to release public polling that we've undertaken over the last couple of days that indicates a majority of Australians now favour nuclear power. And uh, it's a debate we need to have and we can put it to a vote and we can decide as Australians. We've got a new uh, Premier down in Tasmania. He's come out today and says we need to move off the 26th of January. Uh, he says Australia Day, where it is, is a divisive uh, national holiday. Uh, he's backing to this Indigenous voice. You've created the Centre for the Australian Way of Life at the IPA. John, you were instrumental in driving it. What do you think of a Liberal Premier uh, pushing out this pretty negative view of Australia's history? Well, it's a negative view of Australian history that's being perpetrated by the national curriculum, that's reflected in the media, that's reflected in the debate of civil society. And the Tasmanian Premier is absolutely wrong. This is not a divisive debate. Again, we know the overwhelming majority of Australians think Australia is a good country, we are not a racist country, and that Australia Day is a day to celebrate all of us coming together. Uh, if the Tasmanian Premier thinks this is divisive, it's only because he is listening to a small minority of loud, committed people. Now, they're absolutely entitled to express their opinion, Australia is a great liberal democracy, but the idea that a small, loud, vocal minority get to determine something as important as this because they haven't given up uh, on this as a debate, I think is completely misguided. We have to remember in the 1970s, you'll recall Anzac Day was going to go as well. Anzac Day, uh, celebrated war, was meant to commemorate uh, what we call now today toxic masculinity. But today, Anzac Day is a great national day because we listened to real Australians and that's what Australia Day is about. And the Tasmanian Premier is absolutely wrong on Australia Day and he's absolutely wrong to think that embedding racial difference into the Constitution permanently will do anything to bring Australians together. It was just picking up a column, a great column you wrote in the Australian Financial Review where you talk about woke business. I mean, part of the hits coming on Australia Day 
are coming from virtue signaling businesses. Some are offering their employees another public holiday to take if they don't want to recognise Australia Day. Uh, other companies like Coles that used to have uh, and Woolworths, lots of bunting for Australia Day, the sort of bunting we're seeing on display in Britain at the moment for the Jubilee. Uh, that seems to be hidden down aisles as if we're almost embarrassed about the Australian flag. It's one thing for all ordinary Australians to say they want these days um, celebrated and protected, but woke business has another agenda. Oh, look, it has another agenda, and we have to understand, again, it's an agenda of a very small minority. It's an agenda of woke CEOs who are terrified what their teenage children are going to say around the dinner table. It's an agenda of HR and diversity managers. I think Australians are getting sick of businesses saying we are diverse, we are welcoming, we are inclusive, when there's only one opinion that's ever expressed. There's mm. no diversity of political opinion in the boardrooms of Australia. And that's the point that I, I make in the piece. And the broader issue that's come out of woke big business is that the Liberal Party has to understand big business is not on its side. Big business is in it for big business. Absolutely, that's what business is. But uh, the Liberal Party needs to know uh, that on so many issues, big business is now of the left. Spot on. John Roskam, look forward to seeing you again on Credlin. Thank you for your time.